Hey everybody, this is Joel Hoekstra of Whitesnake here at Guitar World. Uh, I think a lot of you out there probably caught my monster pentatonic lesson and I wanted to give you some more pentatonic ideas. Um, so another one of my fortes is, is multi-finger tapping. So I wanted to dig in a little bit and give you guys some pentatonic tapping ideas today. All right, I'm gonna assume most of you out there are familiar with standard one finger tapping. Um, but for those of you that aren't, I do want to give a quick primer as a, as a bonus of what's outside of the lesson in the magazine. So I'm going to take the fifth fret here in A minor pentatonic and hammer down eight, and then I'm tapping down the tenth fret with my right hand. Index finger and middle finger are usually standard choices. And now that's the three note pattern that you want to get going, the old Eddie Van Halen eruption pattern. So five, eight, ten, now I'm going to pull off to the fifth. When I pull off with my right hand, I pull up across the string. Okay, and obviously you can work the other direction. I can start with the right hand and go down. Okay, these are good places to start for those that aren't familiar with tapping. Or there's one of just doubling up on the right hand, um, which is kind of popularized by Randy Rhodes. Okay, so those are three great, like, just beginner tapping exercises for those that aren't familiar with um, tapping out there. Now I want to get into the bulk of the lesson, which is going to use more than one finger off of the right hand. So here we go. All right, so exercise one is just going to work on seeing and visualizing the next two notes in the pentatonic scale on each string. So most of you, of course, know the pentatonic right here. Okay, now what we're going to do with the right hand is find what the next two notes on each string would be. So I'm going to get 5-8 with my left hand here, and then 10-12 with my right. Okay, now moving on to the A string here. Okay, so I'm just finding the next two notes. And in general, this is a little easier than the pull-offs with the right hand. We're just having to set down notes in this exercise. So we... through the D string, okay, that's the same exact pattern as on the, the A string. Okay, there we get to the G, which this is debatable whether or not you want to go pinky or third. Okay, I'm probably going to go third because the next string, then, the pinky is actually going to be at the 13th fret, so... Okay, so now we're up to the B, and then on the high E here. Okay, we're going 5, 8, 10, 12. So all in all, just getting the visualization for what those next notes are, we have. Okay, now the trickier part is coming down on those. Uh, the reason being is that pull-offs are much harder with your right hand than hammer-ons. So we're going to start with the 12 here on the high E, and I'm going to pull up across to that 10th fret. Okay? And up with my first finger off to the left hand notes. Okay? That's also just a good place to start. Just... Okay? Now on the B string, Again, you know, you don't have to do exactly what's written down in the magazine. These are conceptual lessons. So um, if you want to just focus on one string, that's totally cool. But this is going across. Getting, you know, we're going to use the same frets on the way back down. No big surprise pattern wise. I think you get the concept of it. Okay, so all in all coming down. So on the way up, and on the way back up. So in exercise two, we're going to create a six note pattern. Um, starting with the first finger on the right hand, I'm going to hammer down the 10th, hammer down 12, pull off the 10th, pull off the 8th, 
so total six note pattern. Okay, which is great just to get going. Okay, let's move on to the A string and take, you know, we've already figured out what frets are next. So hopefully just going off of exercise one, you kind of have figured out where that right hand is going to go. Okay, I think in the exercise it was written out once on each string, but again, you can really do whatever you want with this. This is really just a, a concept for you guys. So here is exercise two in total. One side note on this stuff, on exercise two, it works so great chromatically to take that six note pattern. I actually have a couple solos where I, I do this a similar thing outside of the pedal. Where basically I'm just taking instead of the actual pentatonic notes. I'm So exercise three, I've taken another six note pattern. I'm just gonna start with the first finger on the right hand. Off to the eighth fret with the left hand. Ten, five, and then eight. Okay, so same thing on the A, except of course the frets change to go to what we learned in exercise one. And on the D. And again, you know, I think it's written one time in on each string in the magazine, but do whatever you want with it. It sounds pretty cool sitting on them as well. Okay, and with the B. And on the high E. Okay, so I think all in all, let's see where I ended that one on the 10th fret. So all in all, exercise three sounds something like this. Okay, moving on to exercise four. We're gonna add one extra note. So um, this is gonna be a little more challenging in terms of visualization with your right hand. It's one, one extra note with your right hand that we didn't cover. So we are gonna start with the first finger again. Hammering down 12. So we're going straight up, back down, okay? Easy enough, right? But now we're gonna go. So we're going to the 15th there on the low E. So all in all, we have. Moving on to the A. Your frets are 5, 7, 10, 12, and 15. On the D here we got Okay, on the G And on the B And on the high E Exercise four for you, one more time. So what about bending, right? Well, you can do that with uh, tapping, at the, just because we're 
using our, our right hand on the neck doesn't mean that we can't change the pitch of notes. So I just want to practice bending up to that last, that extra note that we were adding there in exercise four, in exercise five here, by going five, eight, ten, five, eight, ten, twelve. Okay, and then bending up. Okay, so how am I doing that? Well, I'm just holding the note and I'm really bending with my left hand. And depending where you are on the fingerboard, I try to usually use an upward pressure with my right hand and a downward with my left hand to get that pitch. I find that's where you get the most control. So I'm technically right here forcing, and you can see my left hand on the eighth fret is doing the bend. So just because we're tapping doesn't mean we can't have some feel and some money notes and things like that. It doesn't all have to, you know, sound like an arcade game. So there's really working on the A string. Okay, and we really could bend any of them with the first finger there. You see I'm bending up to where we're getting with the third. So. I just wrote in the exercise in the magazine just going up to the extra note, but any of them. You can bend any of these notes. I just want you to understand the concept that I'm more or less holding it with an up, upward pressure with my right hand and a downward pressure with my left hand doing the bending. Okay, actually, it's really nice for vibrato. You can get a real nice vibrato that way. And same thing on the D, we're just bending up a whole instead of a one and a half. Okay, on the G. On the B. Okay, and then on the high E, this is the most challenging, especially tuned to standard with 11s on right now. It's going to be a little different because we're going to try and press down, a downward pressure with the right hand, um, because the left hand doesn't have any more room to pull down on the pitch of the bend. So the left hand is going to work up while the right hand pushes down. So here that is. Anyway, so hopefully that gets your right hands going, guys, and you have some fun. And it's just one more approach to playing pentatonic, which, of course, is the, you know, staple of soloing and rock. So uh, hopefully you find some of it useful. Uh, it's been a real pleasure, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.